Okay, the next point of concurrency and the concurrent lines we're going to talk about are the medians. And again, the definition of these things will tell you how to draw them. Okay? Perpendicular bisectors. How do I draw them? Perpendicular bisector of sides of a triangle. Find the midpoint of each side. Draw a perpendicular bisector. Angle bisector. Touch the vertex. Bisect the angle. Median. Now let's say this and then we'll simplify it. Median. So median of a triangle is a line segment. Drawn. Let's put an N on there so that makes a little more sense. Drawn using a vertex of a triangle as one endpoint and using the midpoint of the opposite side as the other endpoint. So it's going to connect the midpoint on one side to the opposite vertex. What are the endpoints? Vertex, midpoint of the opposite side. Got a drawing here. Again, triangle ABC. We're going to get stuck with this. And its point of concurrency is D. That is known as a centroid. What's its claim to fame? It's the center of gravity of the triangle. It's point of balance. If I want to balance that triangle flat, I want to find the centroid and stick it on there. Got it? If I want to make a mobile flattened triangles, I want to find the centroid of each one of those and I want to hang that. No, oh, I've got some other issues there. I've got to balance it across too. I've got to hang the same amount of weight. All right? But that's what that is. Its claim to fame is the center of gravity. Something you're going to want to know if you're in construction design and I creative design or construction, mechanical, civil engineers, uh, those kind of people. Going to, know, going to want to know that. Now, there's another claim to fame. It's hard to put on here, but I wrote it right here. The centroid is, D is, one-third of the distance from the side of the triangle and two-thirds of the distance from the vertex. Huh. Well, let's do this. ED is one-third of CE. So, the distance CE, ED is one-third of it. Well, what does that make CD? Well, it must be two-thirds of it. All right? So if EC was 3, ED would be 1, and CD would be 2. Okay? FD, from F to D, is one-third of A to F of the median. Well, that makes AD is two-thirds of that median. Okay? GD, from the midpoint of the side to the centroid, is one-third of BG. Okay? Well, that makes BD two-thirds of it. So basically what we're looking at is if you take that median and you divide it into two segments at the centroid, two-thirds of it is toward the vertex, one-third is toward the midpoint. Typically it's easy to see because that's the shorter side. Now sometimes you'll have some triangles where it's pretty hard to do. You simply got to remember, toward the side is the shortest, toward the vertex is the longest. Well think about it. Your circumcenter is the equal distance from the longest point of the triangle. In center is equal distance from the shortest point on the triangle. What's the shortest point on the triangle? The sides. What's the longest point on the triangle? The corners. Go from there, okay? This, as you can imagine, creates a tremendous amount of opportunity for algebraic challenge. Look for tons of quizzes, look for tons of calculations on tests. You just expect it to know it. Get it down. It's not on the formula chart. Tattoo it on the back side of your eyelids so you will remember it. You got it? Now, the other thing, simply because of the definition here, shouldn't have to tell you this. Shouldn't, you just should pick it up. I mean, at this point in time, we're almost, you know, getting to halfway through this course, and we're sitting there going, wow, I shouldn't have to say this, but I did. I marked it on the drawing. What is this endpoint? This endpoint is the midpoint of the opposite side. 
Well, what do we know about the midpoint of a segment? Bisects a segment into two congruent segments. Therefore, AG is congruent to CG. Got it? Or let's say AE is congruent to BE. BF is congruent to CF. And CG is congruent to AG. Wow, there's another whole set of algebraic challenges, isn't it? Another whole set of equations we can set up and go with. Okay? Centroid, point of concurrency. All right? A little less algebra on this one. Still a very important concept. Okay? Remember the definitions of these concurrent lines. The things we're doing will tell you how to draw them. Okay, let's clear some of this out, and we will create some algebra challenges. You ready? Okay, let's work with this and um, see what we can do with it. I'm going to just sit it over here, and we're going to work this out together. So as you see it, I'll use a black over here and see what that does. EC equals 21. Well, EC is the entire median, isn't it? It's the thing we want to, it's this one, we want to divide by thirds. So we divide it by 3 and we equal 7. So one third of it, ED, the part to the side, is going to be 7. So this one right here equals 7. Okay? The other part is going to equal twice that, two of them. So this is going to be 14. FD equals 4. Well, FD is one third of AF. One third. So what am I going to do with four to find all of AF? Well, if it's one third and AF is three thirds, I'm simply going to multiply by three and I get 12. Okay? BD equals 16. BD is two thirds of BG. Well, if it's two thirds, I can divide by two and that's going to give me GD. That's going to divide back. Okay. So that's going to be 8. Okay. These are not hard if you remember which one is 2 thirds, which one is, is 1 third. Got it? Okay. All right. I assume you know how to find, if I give you this and say it's 5, that you can tell me what. If I say AG is 5, then you know that AC is you got it, 10. Okay, there's medians. I think you're beginning to see why I postponed doing this one. It gets uh, rather complicated and involved.